Good morning, everybody. Could you all stand with me and join in with me for prayer? Praise and worship, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, let's just give the Lord a hand clap of praise and just begin to thank him and honor him for just allowing us just to be in this place another Sunday just to give his name, honor, and glory. Amen. Heavenly Father, God, we come to you this morning, God, just to say thank you. God, we thank you for the blessings of this day, life, health, and strength. God, we thank you for being God and God all by yourself. God, now right now we come to you asking that you allow your anointing to fall fresh on us in this place. God, flow through our hearts, our minds, and our spirits. God, allow us to forget everything that happened the, the, this week past and what happened before we came here, but allow us to just focus our minds on you, God. Focus on giving you all the glory. God, focus on giving you all the praise, God. God, we lift up everyone who is in this place right now in the name of Jesus. God, we lift up those who are worshiping with us virtually right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, we lift up those to you who are sick, God, and we ask that you remind them that by your stripes that they are healed, God. If they just believe it, God, if they just have the faith the size of a mustard seed, they can say to whatever mountains in their lives to be thou removed. God, we lift up the, the, the depressed to you, God, right now in the name of Jesus, God. Anybody who needs something from you, God, we lift them up to you right now in the name of Jesus. God, we lift up the man of God over this house. God, we ask that you continue to keep your hands on them, God. God, we ask that you keep them covered under the drippings of your blood. God, and anybody who comes through that door today that does not know you, God, we ask that through some act of worship, somebody being kind to them, God, that they may see the light and see you, God, and be, be drawn closer to you. All these things we pray in your darling son Jesus' name. Amen. me 
mighty God. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together and give God some praise. Uh, we've got a video that we want to show uh, right now. this morning we celebrate your birth we give you thanks we thank you god for your sons and your daughters who thought it not robbery to get up early this morning and to find you in the places where no one else wants to go that was the very place that you were born in a remote location those are the places god where we're going to find you today so we thank you god for this opportunity to partner with you to be like a wise man to bring gifts to people who are just like you god who are homeless because you have been so gracious to us, we want to extend grace to each and every person we meet today. God, we thank you and we praise you. God, bless these, your sons and your daughters, God. Bless them, God, that they may be touched and that they may be filled with your presence and your power in new and creative ways to be disciples, not just today, but each and every day. We ask it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. over $70,000 that we have given back to our community. Amen. That deserves a hand. Amen. All under the leadership of our pastor. Amen. John F. White II. Amen. And I'm standing here this morning. This is the final week. And then this Saturday, we will be celebrating his 50th birthday. Amen. His 50th birthday. 
50 years on this earth, that's a blessing. That is a blessing. That is a true blessing because some people didn't make it. Some people didn't make it. And in and, and this day and age, they're, they're not making it. Whew. it. It's younger and younger, but we just thank God for our pastor. Um, I'm here this morning to give an appeal. Amen. Um, pastor White has been in my life for five years, I believe. I moved here and then I left. <laughs> But from the, from the very time that I met him, he's always encouraged me. He's always encouraged me to do things that Lord knows. I was like, I don't know what you think I can do, man. I went to school for business, not IT. Not, well, information, you know, technology, not, not, you know, not web design, not applicate, mobile app design. Not, I just went to school for accounting. Give me some debits and credits and I can add them up for you. But Pastor White has pushed me. He has pushed me. He has encouraged me, always been encouraging to me. Um, and I'm sure to, to everyone here, if, I, if we sat down and, and just had a conversation about what has Pastor White done in your life, what has he spoken into your life, we'd be talking probably for hours Hours when, when my father passed away, Pastor White was the person that I called before he passed. And I was asking he and um, Sister Amy, would you guys pray for me? When my former pastor passed away, Pastor White was the pastor who called me and, and shared that news with me. And so this is a man, he, he is selfless. He's selfless. He's hardworking. I've been, I've been in church all my life, all of my life. And um, Pastor White, he is a pastor for the people. You know, there, there are some pastors, they get in, they, they preach, and then they leave. But he's there with you. He, he texts you. You can text him whenever, and he'll respond. You don't have to wait days um, in order to get a response from him. And so I'm just here asking that whatever he has done for you in your life, that you return, you show that appreciation for him by purchasing a ticket for the birthday celebration on this Saturday, this Saturday morning. It's this Saturday, y'all. It's this Saturday, in case you didn't, it's this Saturday morning, amen, this Saturday morning for the birthday celebration. We're going to go out there and we're going to party. If you don't yet have your ticket, it's only $55. And let me tell you something. Pastor White always says we find needs and we meet needs. We find needs and we meet needs. And that's what really the whole, our everything that we do for LOL, that's what that's about, about finding needs and meeting needs. Well, he's found a need. I know I was a college student where my mama couldn't send me money every month or money every week or care packages but here he is he's saying I'm going to take whatever gifts that I get from my birthday and I'm going to bless a student bless some students at HBCUs because there are some kids that are in school right now they don't know how they're going to eat I promise you I was one of those students there are some students out out that are in school right now who they don't have blankets and it's cold they don't have jackets and it's cold there are some students right now who are just struggling but they're there on a wing and a prayer and so the funds that are raised we're going to bless five college students at five different HBCUs. So if you have not yet purchased your ticket, you can see me. I'll, I'll, I'll get it for you on Eventbrite. You can see Sister Angie. We'll, we'll get your money. If, you, if you're not able to come, um, donate the money. Sow a seed. Amen? Sow a seed into this man of God's life because he's always sowing seeds for us. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Let me again thank you for we've uh, sold about a little bit over a hundred tickets. Um, we're trying to get 
And if you could help us, uh, I would greatly appreciate that. Um, it is my prayer uh, that we're going to enjoy ourselves. Uh, we're going to have a great time. I've got friends uh, flying in from all over the country uh, and even. Uh, uh, and so we are grateful um, for them. And then on Sunday, um, Brother Williams, Sister Williams, Brother um, Brown, I need y'all to take one for the team, Sister Portia. Uh, we have one service next Sunday 10 o'clock one service I know y'all are my faithful 730 members Tamara G but I need y'all to take one for the team next Sunday uh, we can all sleep in after we parted somebody ought to say amen uh, and then 10 o'clock um, I've invited my good friend Pastor Terrence Gray from the St. Mark Church in Orlando to be our preacher uh, as we end our pastoral anniversary celebration and so I am grateful for each and every one of you my brothers and sisters, don't forget about all the announcements of the day and of the week. Let me encourage you on your way out the door, get a copy of our church new annual report. You saw the video. Uh, and so uh, it's a printed version as well. Uh, this week will be an annual conference. We'll be reading our report probably Wednesday morning. Uh, and so uh, down at the Hilton Hotel by the Miami Airport. Uh, and so um, don't have a time yet, but uh, if you have some time, I would love to see you. Um, y'all pray for me. I got to wear a suit for the next five days. Lord, have mercy. Uh, y'all pray much my strength. Uh, and uh, can't be any uh, sweatsuit Sundays at the uh, annual conference. So uh, I need your prayers. Uh, let me also encourage you. Uh, don't forget about all the announcements of the day and of the week. Let me thank you for those who shared last uh, Sunday evening with us uh, at the uh, as uh, we came together at the New Mount Olive Baptist Church. We praise and thank God that we've raised so far over $95,000 uh, to share with our brothers and sisters in the Bahamas. Uh, and we found some persons who are here uh, that we're going to be a blessing who migrated um, from the Bahamas here, staying with family. So we are working on trying to help them as well. No Bible said it is Tuesday night. Uh, we're going to be an annual conference, and I look forward to seeing you uh, on Saturday morning uh, from 11 to 3. Uh, it's a day party. It's an all-white party. Somebody ought to say amen. Uh, it's an all-white party. I told one of my friends, uh, he said, I'm coming to the party. I said, well, if you don't have on white, then there are going to be some armor bearers at the door. going to turn you away. Uh, let me also en encourage you to join us if you're interested in going on our mission trip to Belize. Um, please uh, see me as soon as worship is over. I can get you the details. Uh, also, if you're interested in going to the Holy Land uh, in 2020 or 21, we still have spots uh, remaining. Invite a friend to come and share with us. Everybody standing on your feet. Everybody standing. It's good to see some folks we hadn't seen in a while. Some people who working out of town, back in town. Come on, hook somebody. Tell them God loves you and so do I. There's nothing you can do about it. Good to see you. Uh, some folks got some new hairstyles. Good to see them. Somebody ought to say amen. Uh, some folks came in the church at their usual time. We're not going to call their names. They're asking the Lord to help them, and I ask the Lord to help them too. Amen. God loves you. So do I. There's nothing you can do about it. Brothers and sisters, it's offering time. Come on, won't you put your hands together and give God some praise? Uh, if you need an offering envelope, raise your hand. The ushers will be glad to give you one. As you know, there are several ways you can give back to the Lord's house via offering envelope, uh, cash app, dollar sign, the Emmanuel Temple. Uh, also, our website, theit.org, and or our app, the Emmanuel Temple. Uh, my brothers and sisters, we are all 
blessed folks in the house. Somebody ought to say amen. We are all blessed folks, those who are worshiping virtually. And so, my brothers and sisters, we are grateful uh, for each and every one of you and your commitment to the Lord's house and your commitment to God's work here at Emmanuel Temple as we do great and wonderful and marvelous things. And I just want to encourage you uh, to trust God. I want to encourage you to trust God with 10% of the last check you receive. I want to encourage you to trust God. For those who are worshiping virtually to give and sow, this is fertile soil. I am grateful for our persons, our kingdom partners all over this world. This past week, one of our kingdom partners uh, became a member all the way from Canada. Come on, let's put our hands together. And praise God for that witness. So what are we going to give today? Come on, let's put it in our right hand. Let's lift it up to the Lord. Let me encourage you to become a recurring giver. What is that? That means every time you give, every time you get paid, it automatically um, debits your debit card. Uh, you don't have to worry about it, whether you're going to see the grandkids. It's here. Somebody ought to say, man, whether you're going to Orlando, it's here. We're not calling any names, but they know who I'm talking about. Um, I'm glad to see them today. Um, let's pray. Grace is wonderful, kind God. We thank you for the this wonderful privilege to give back to a God who's given so much to us. And so, God, when we just think about your goodness and all that you've done for us, God, our souls cry out hallelujah because we know you didn't have to do what you did, God. We know you didn't have to open doors you opened for us, God. You didn't have to hold back things that you held back for us, God. We know you didn't have to cover us with the blood, but we're so glad that you did. And so, God, our response to what you've done for us is to give back to you, God. Our response to what you've done for us is for us to give back to you. Our response to what you've done for us is for us to give back to you, except these are gifts, God, of times and offerings, God, as our tangible expressions, God, that we believe that love is not just something that we say, but it's something that we do. And so, God, we love you, God, and we praise you and we glorify you, God. Take these, our gifts of tithes and offerings, and press them down and shake them together and run them over, God, that more people may be helped, more lives may be touched, more needs may be met, God. More people may be encouraged, God. More young people may be fed, God. More naked people may be clothed, God. More persons may be encouraged, not just around here, but all over this world. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all those who love the Lord said amen. And we know that God loves a God loves a I'm going to say it until we mean it. Say it like we mean it. God loves a All right. Everybody standing who has not given, won't you face the outside walls and come down and place your gifts, tithes, and offerings in these offering baskets. several of our members lifted in prayer uh, last week one of our members ended their cancer treatments while another one was starting their cancer treatments so I ask that you would continue to keep them lifted in prayer we have members uh, who are still out of work now going on several months we still have members who are dealing with crisis in their lives we have members who are uh, caregivers for sick family members. Uh, they need our prayers. We're still praying for our brothers and sisters in the Bahamas. Um, we'll be going uh, a week from Monday uh, tomorrow to uh, go and assess and to be a blessing. Uh, and so um, 
my brothers and sisters, well, we need your prayers. Um, our brothers and sisters in the Bermuda need your prayers. Um, that person sitting next to you and persons who are not here but are worshiping virtually who need your prayers. And so the altar is now open for you to come and have a little talk with Jesus as Sister Kenya leads us now in song. The altar is now open for you to come and whisper a word of prayer. Oh God, you 
deserve all the honor because you are worthy to be praised. God, we give you all the glory, all the honor because you are worthy to be praised. God, we give you all the glory and all the honor because you are worthy to be praised. God, when we think that about how pitiful, wretched, undone we are, God, you are worthy. We give you all the glory and all the honor, God. When we think about all that you've done for us, God, for the last seven days, how you've made ways out of no ways and how you watched over us and you've protected us, God, you deserve all the glory and all the honor because you are worthy to be praised, God. As we move to this preaching moment, God, hide me once again behind the cross under the drippings of your blood. Give me a new, fresh anointing. Have me not to rely on last Sunday's anointing, but give me a new, fresh anointing, God, that yokes would be destroyed and burdens would be lifted and strongholds would be torn down, that someone won't leave like they came, that someone will be encouraged to run on to see what the end's going to be. In the name of Jesus, the Christ we pray. And if you know he gives, he deserves all of the glory, all the honor. Put your glad hands together and give God some praise. Won't you stand on your feet, my brothers and sisters, for the reading of God's word found in the gospel according to Matthew chapter 26. I want to read uh, verses 36 through 44 in your hearing. Matthew chapter 26. 
and verses 36 through 44. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Listen to the word from the Lord. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were weary. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying these same words. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to put a tag on this text as we end this series of sermons called Inside Out on Prayer. I want to put a tag on this text today simply called silence. Won't you turn to your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, silence. I know someone in the house and is worshiping virtually is saying, pastor, there's never been a time in uh, my life that I didn't hear from God but I believe there's someone else in the house and worshiping virtually who has experienced the silence of God y'all know I'm a product brother Justin of 70s and the 80s where is new edition when you need them Mr. Telephone Man Uh, there's something wrong with my line when I dial my baby's number there's a click somebody else knows what I'm talking about every time somebody I'll just shout Mr. Telephone Man I, I, I need I need to let someone know that, then, that in these times when we are experiencing the silence of God, it has nothing to do with what we are or are not doing. It's not that we aren't paying attention, listening, or not on the right path, but there are times in our lives when we will experience the silence of God. It's not that we aren't close to God or staying in God's face or even separated from God, but sometimes in our lives, uh, we have moments where we will experience the silence of God. And I'm convinced more than ever, I teach that we really don't get it when it comes to prayer. We've tried to make prayer into some mystical experience, lighting candles and playing gospel music and, and all these other things that we've added to prayer like prayer really needs those things. That somebody needs to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, prayer doesn't need any chaser. It doesn't need anything added to it. And let someone know that we don't make prayer happen. That's God's business. Uh, Our task is to simply make ourselves available for this glorious interactive communication between a God who sits high but also looks low. Prayer is dependence, is openness, trust, and listening love. Uh, to pray is nothing more involved. Pray, to pray is nothing more involved than to let Jesus into our knees. To pray is to give Jesus permission to employ his powers in the alleviation of our distress. And to pray is to let Jesus glorify his name in the midst of our needs. Uh, my beloved in the Lord, our helplessness is the very thing which opens wide the door unto him and gives God access to all of our needs helplessness church is the real secret and the impelling power of prayer for it is only when we are helpless that we open our hearts to Jesus to let him help us in our distress according to his loving kindness and his tender mercy and all I'm trying to tell us this morning that prayer is an ongoing growing loving relationship with God so so go with me this morning as we find Jesus taking
taking Peter, James, and John, his inner circle, to come. And he says, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Uh, stay here and keep watch with me. Don't close your Bibles because it's right there in the 38th verse. The text goes on to tell us that Jesus goes a little further, uh, falls on his face uh, to the ground and prays. Uh, that's verses A. That's 39 verse A and the B clause. I want to stop right there. Notice if you will. Huh? Jesus is doing this all by himself. Huh? He's laying prostrate before the Lord, calling on the name of God, his Father. And I need someone to hear me good this morning. Some things huh? we're going to have to go by ourselves and do all by ourselves. Huh? We're going to have to leave the crowd. We're going to have to leave the family. We're going to have to leave the clique and uh, go and fall on our face and seek God all by by ourselves. Uh, we need to know that the Jews stood up to pray, huh? but Jesus is on the ground praying, doing something unusual, unorthodox, huh? as he calls on God, his Father. Huh? My brothers and sisters, what would happen this week huh? if we fell on our faces to talk to God? What would happen if our family members huh, saw us laying prostrate before the Lord? If our children saw us on the ground talking to God, would they be scared or would they call the belief because they thought we had fallen and we couldn't get back up. But notice the term that Jesus used for father and it's translated uh, as Abba Father. It's a term of endearment, a term of familiarity, a term of relationship. It's only because of that that Jesus can come to God the way he comes to God. Uh, my brothers and sisters, somebody remembers that American Express used to have a slogan that said membership has its privileges. Uh, well, I need some want to know that relationships have their privileges. Huh? It's only because of relationship that we can ask some of the things that we ask. Huh? Get away with some of the things that we get away with. Huh? Do some of the things that we do. Huh? And I want to ask this question. Huh? How is our relationship with our Abba Father this morning? Huh? This question is not only for those who love the Lord and heard their cry, huh? but for those who don't have a song in their mouth anymore. Huh? This question is not only for those who are in relationship with God, huh? who know that the love not just what we say but it's what we do huh? but it's for those who haven't been feeling loved lately huh? this question is for folks who are cheating on God with friends making people a God with a lowercase g huh? listening to them more than they're listening to God huh? wanting to please them more than they want to please God huh? and wanting to spend more time with them than wanting to spend hearing from God this question huh? is for folks who are sneaking around on God huh? with food that made them into a God huh? loving it idolizing it can't make us it can't make us whole huh? it can't hold us in the midnight hour it can't empower us it can't encourage us and it can't embrace us huh? and I just want to remind someone huh, that our God is a jealous God huh? because he said thou shall have no other gods before me the text tells us Jesus prays if it's possible to take this cup away from me maybe we aren't reading what I'm reading but Jesus is saying I don't want to do this Jesus fully human and fully divine is asking can he pass on this particular assignment huh? Jesus who is the word who's become flesh is asking can I sit this one out huh? my brothers and sisters what we see in Jesus huh, is the entire gamut of emotions in this particular passages of scripture huh? fear uncertainty anxiety bewilderment distress and burden with grief huh? and I don't know what your Bible says huh? but my Bible says Jesus is praying to God saying I don't want to do this huh? God it's too much for me huh? God you can do everything make this go away huh? God you can do everything this is too hard huh? God you can do everything change this around huh? This prayer is for someone who is in a crisis huh, and is asking God to turn things around, huh, get you out of this huh, and make it disappear. But I want to help someone this morning huh, that regardless of who we are, where we're going, huh, we're all going to have to face some Gethsemane's in our lives. Huh? We're going to have to go through some stuff. Huh? We're going to have to face some stuff huh, that is bigger than us that we can't handle, huh, that is depressing and disgusting. Huh? And what Gethsemane's are we facing in our lives this morning 
Is it that we want to get married and we don't have any prospect, only suspects? Is it we want to go back to finish school, huh? and we, but we have children who need us? Is it a relationship that has gone from sweet to sour? Are we in a place where love doesn't live there anymore? Have we and our spouses become roommates tolerating each other? Huh? Neither one of us can afford to move out and pay half the mortgage. What? Is our Gethsemane this morning? Huh? Is our money funny? Our chain strange? Are we robbing Peter to pay Paul? Huh? Sticking up Bartholomew and getting mad at Matthew for asking us to pay him back the money we already owe him? What is our Gethsemane this morning? Huh? Afraid to go to the doctor because our health is failing? Huh? We get winded when we walk a long time. We have aches and pains everywhere. Huh? Our head hurts all of the time. What? is our Gethsemane this morning. Huh? Our loved one is dying. Our heart is aching. Our mind is doing cartwheels. Our thoughts are troubled. Huh? And we need to go sit on the couch and talk to someone. Huh? But we don't because we're afraid of what bones they may find out about of us. What is our Gethsemane this morning? Huh? We still enable our grown children huh? who have jobs but we still take care of them. Huh? Spend money on them. Huh? That they don't. Would we still much spend money huh? to impress folks we don't know huh? and who don't even like us anyway? What is is our Gethsemane this morning. Huh? Whatever it is huh, that we don't want to deal with, that we wished, huh, that never showed up on our doorstep, huh, that we hope never stopped by our house. Huh? The hymn writer tells us, huh, lest we should forget huh, Gethsemane, huh? lest we should forget huh, thy agony, huh? lest we should forget huh, thy love for thee, huh? lead me to Calvary. Huh? And someone in the house and worshiping virtually huh, needs to never forget huh, where we are right now. Huh? Never forget the feelings that we're experiencing as a matter of fact bookmark it highlighted to remind ourselves how we felt where we were and what was going on because this ain't the last stop on the journey of faith we call life God hasn't forgotten our labor love God isn't gonna waste this opportunity to teach us what we need to know somebody needs to know don't forget where we are right now I, I, I know I know Jesus didn't want to take the cup but each of us needed Jesus to take that cup to show us that we could handle any problem, any situation, circumstance, any issue huh, and anything that comes our way. We needed Jesus to show us that we don't have to be threatened people huh, and their children when they've gone public with what they've done what, what, what we've done to them huh, we needed Jesus to show us huh, that we don't have to hate everybody and call their names huh, call them names to say we love our, that's to say that we love ourselves huh, we don't have to kill our brothers and sisters huh, and young children just because we don't like them huh, we needed Jesus to show us huh, that we don't have to fall apart when we messed up and lost millions of dollars in contracts huh, and endorsements deals. Huh? We needed Jesus huh, to show us huh, that we don't have to be stuck on stupid when our lives have changed because of divorce or sickness. Huh? We needed Jesus to show us huh, that we don't have to curse anybody out or hit anybody in the mouth huh, or cut anybody ear off. Huh? We needed Jesus to show us huh, that when all hell breaks loose, huh, we don't have to go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Huh? We needed Jesus to show us huh, how to deal with people who can't stand us walking, riding, living, or dead. Huh? We needed Jesus to show us huh, how to handle our money and treat other folks huh? we needed Jesus to show us huh, how to deal with loved ones dying huh? our mind playing tricks on us huh? and how to love people we don't even like huh? we needed Jesus to show us huh, how to handle our haters and deal with the devil huh? and ignore our enemies huh? we needed Jesus to show us huh, how not to be bothered with betrayal huh? how to manage the insecurities of our friends huh? and the failings of our families huh? we needed Jesus to show us huh, how to engage church folks huh? hang out with people that nobody wants to be bothered with huh? and love the people who no one lets to love them. Huh? We needed Jesus to show us huh? how to bless those that curse us, huh? heal those who hurt us, huh? and cure those who don't care about us. Huh? We needed Jesus to show us huh? how to operate in the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, huh? kindness, goodness, huh? faithfulness, huh? and self-control. Huh? But also in the gifts of the Spirit. Huh? We needed Jesus to show us huh? how to lead by serving. Huh? Love by 
giving and learn by listening. I just want to ask, do I have anyone in the house and worshiping virtually that doesn't just need a little more Jesus but needs a lot of Jesus? Maybe there's somebody else that knows that Jesus is still the joy in our time of sorrow. I hope for tomorrow. Jesus is still in charge. He still sits on the throne and the government will be on his shoulders. Somebody ought to shout, we still need Jesus. My, my, my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, when we were in Jerusalem, so Charlene, uh, we want to put the videos up. Uh, one of the places that we visited was Gethsemane. Uh, what, what you're seeing right now is, is the garden of Gethsemane, and what you see are olive trees uh, uh, that are lined with trees uh, and because Gethsemane y'all means olive press uh, in order uh, for the oil to be extracted from the olive uh, it must be pressed out uh, and my brothers and sisters uh, uh, also uh, in, in the next video uh, you, you see Jesus praying and the rock uh, this is the same rock uh, that Jesus was praying uh, in the garden of Gethsemane and right there uh, it's where Jesus was saying uh, God not my way. God uh, let this cup pass from me uh, but my brothers and sisters uh, I don't want you to stop right there because this last video uh, I, I want you to see something that really blew my mind uh, when I was walking around there in Jerusalem and if you go with me you'll, you'll see it too there, there, there is one thing that is an olive press you see there's a donkey there and you see there's a rolling thing it's there that they put olives there to press out the oil that's in the olive the oil was pressed out so the olive could be used to light amps lamps and in the temple and, and for cooking and for medicine for athletes uh, to rub their bodies uh, for sacred offerings uh, and personal grooming uh, the olive y'all was beaten trodden and pressed uh, by human animals uh, to produce oil uh, my beloved and lord uh, how many times have we been beaten trodden uh, or pressed by humans uh, because of the great things emerged from us uh, someone needs to know uh, that we wouldn't have hung in there uh, if it wouldn't have been for someone telling us we'd never amount to anything we would have quit if hadn't been for somebody telling us we couldn't do it we would have put it in we would never put in the long hours to accomplish the things we've accomplished if it hadn't been for folks doubting us and somebody besides me needs to praise God this morning for being trodden and pressed by people to squeeze out of us what we couldn't or wouldn't have got out if it hadn't been for them it hurt but then we can shout hallelujah it was painful but now we can say it gave us power to endure it was terrible but it became my testimony and I'm looking at some folks in the house and others who are worshiping virtually who've been crushed who've been trodden on and who've been pressed down but God took what they meant to hurt us and use it to help us God took what they meant to destroy us to help us get to our destiny God took what they meant to kill us to kickstart us to where we should have been I just want to encourage someone huh, who is getting crushed, huh, who is getting trotted on, huh, and who is getting pressed down huh, to hold your head up. Huh, hang in there huh, and hold on huh, because right in front of us, huh, God is transforming us huh, from being bitter to better, huh, from being blessed to our breakthrough. Huh, and we don't see it right now, huh, but in order for the oil to come out, huh, God wants to not only help us, huh, but to help our church huh, and to help someone else. Huh, somebody ought to shout, it gotta come out. Huh, that's a word for someone there is something in us that must come out and in order for it to come out it's going to be uncomfortable it's going to be hard it's going to be cruel and in order for the order to come out in order for it to get out God want us out we got to go through it a a anybody else want some oil in their life 
that wants something to come out of them that will bless generations to come that wants to help someone get healed that wants to aid someone get an anointing on their life somebody ought to shout oil I want some oil in my life I want some oil on me because when I think about the olive tree and all the olive had to go through all of the pressing all of the rolling all of the squeezing all of the ringing all of the crushing all of the squashing all of the forcing just to get the oil out and all I've got to say I want some oil in my life I know God is silent but God is saying but what God ain't saying is enough for me because what God is doing is worth it I want to say that one more time God may not be talking but what God is doing in my life is worth it that's the word for someone else God may be silent but God is working and how God is moving is a enough to hold us, to sustain us, to keep us, to protect us, to empower us, to bless us. I want to remind someone, all oh, is representative of the Holy Spirit anointing. And I just want to ask again, anybody else want some oil in their life? Anybody else besides me know they need some oil in their life? And the only way they're not going to lose it is because of oil in our lives. The only way we're not going to go off each week is because of oil in our lives. The only way we're not going to walk away is because some oil is in our lives. Somebody ought to shout, I need some oil. That's why Jesus is ready to face whatever Jesus has to face because of the oil in his life. Jesus has been praying and God is silent and Jesus is still praying Jesus has been on his face praying for over an hour crying sweating with great drops of blood heart racing and through the process Jesus will becomes transformed into God's will if we want to know why we can't handle the stuff in our lives is because we aren't ready to stay in prayer until our will turns into his will. Too many of us are praying drive-by prayers. Place an order at this window. Pick up our order at the next window. But how much of our strength are we depending on by how many few times we ask God for help during the day all of us need to ask ourselves how many times this past week did we ask God to order our steps bridle our tongue shape our thoughts lead us guide us and direct us did we ask God to transform our will into God's will this past week did we ask God to turn what we wanted into what God wanted for us did we ask God to turn how we felt into how God feels did we ask God to turn our will into God's will I just want to remind us that happens that all of this happens only through prayer. Prayer that stays there even when we don't want to. Prayer that stays there even if it takes a long time. Prayer that stays there even when God is not talking back to us. Prayer that stays there even if it seems like it takes forever. Somebody ought to just shout stay there. Everybody standing on your feet. Are we willing to stay there? We, we, we've been praying, we've been fasting, we've been meditating. But the text tells us Jesus not only asked one time, not only asked two times, but asked three times, Father, let this cup pass from me. But notice, if you will, my brothers and sisters, it's in the praying that God is transformed from not my will, but thy will be done. God doesn't, Jesus doesn't stop praying to God. He keeps on praying until his will becomes lost in thine. I, I just want to help someone this morning who, who's been praying for something for a long time.
continue to pray till what you want becomes what God wants. Keep praying until your will becomes his will. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. God, yes, there are times when we're not hearing anything you're saying. As a matter of fact, God, you're just you're not saying anything. But we are encouraged, God, that though you may not be talking, you are doing things all around us and working for our good and we don't even know it. God, why did you have Jesus to pray out of all the places in the Garden of Gethsemane around olive trees because he needed to visualize the process and he needed to remember the process of where the olive goes for the oil to come out. And so God, Somebody who's in a crushing, who's in a crushing, a pressing down, a downtrodden place. Remind them today, God, that you want to get something out of them. And the only way it can come out, God, is if they have to be open to what you're allowing to happen in their life. God. You want to get some oil out of us. But God is going to be a painful process. God, you want to get some oil out of us. But it's going to hurt a whole lot. God, you want to get some oil out of us. Because God, that same oil is used to heal. God, that same oil is used to anoint. God, that same oil is used to light pathways that are dark. God, that same oil, God, is going to be needed for another time, God. But right now, God, you got to get the oil out of us. And so, God, there may be someone in the house, there may be someone who's worshiping virtually, God, who's not only not, who's not only, who's not saved, it's not only not a member of a church, but God, there's a third category of some people. I don't want them to move to the altar. I don't want them to touch the computer or the iPad or the phone. God, but I want to touch and agree with the people who are being crushed right now. People who are being pressed down right now. God, for them not to move from where they are. Because God, you're trying to get something out of them. God, you're trying to get something out of them that's not just going to bless them, but bless generations to come, God. God, you're trying to get something out of them. That's going to be a help to people they don't even know, God. You're trying to get something out of them. That's going to light the pathway for people who are walking in darkness, God. You're trying to get something out of them. And so, God... Have them not to grow weary in their well-doing, God, because your word says they'll reap if they faint not, God. Remind them, God, stay like a tree standing, planted, rooted, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, that they know that their labor is not in vain, God. Have them be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that they shall not be moved, God. Help them to understand, God, you're trying to get something out of them. So God, we thank you and we praise you for the crushing, pressing, and the downtrodden process that we're going through right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, put those glad hands together and give God some praise. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Um, my brothers and sisters, very quickly, let me thank you again as I shared. Um, we've raised $95,000, uh, Emmanuel Temple and um, Newmont Olive and friends in South Broward and Broward County. Uh, we're still raising funds as the ushers come. Why don't you pull out your phone, um, give on cash out right now. Give $10 to help someone. Um, 
my brothers and sisters, can I tell you what blessed me? Last week, one of our members came to the worship service at New Mount Olive. And I, and I know our members' situation, they have family members who, for a while, they could not find in the Bahamas because of the storm. That, that member came giving a generous gift beyond I know what their capacity to give because I know I'm their pastor. I know what's going on in their lives. But what blessed me was their family had some needs. And they, in turn, gave to help some other people who have some needs. I, I, I want to encourage someone who's worshiping virtually uh, to, to sow because I'm praying a prayer of Jabez over that member's life right now that God will bless her indeed and enlarge their family's territory that God will keep their hands upon them that no evil will come upon them simply because they sowed in spite of their own situation and so everybody standing on your feet my brothers and sisters let me thank you for giving as you know giving uh, giving helps us to be more like Jesus than anything else because Jesus gave. And so, turn to your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, uh, oh neighbor, God wants to get some oil out of you. Turn to your neighbor on behind you and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, stay right there until it all comes out. Won't you turn, put your hands in the air and see the benediction now unto him. <clears throat> who is able to take crushed, pressed down, and trod it over people and get something out of us that's so great, that's so wonderful, that's so marvelous, that forces us to forget the pain that we went through for it to come out. Now unto him who is able to take the very things that he has gotten out of us and use it to bless not only us and people who are connected to us, but bless people beyond our wildest imaginations. Now unto him who is able to take the precious oil It can be a blessing for generations to come. Be glory, power, dominion, and majesty now and forevermore. Somebody ought to shout, I need some oil. Have a blessed week in the Lord. Thank you for those who worship it virtually. <laughs>